There are several important lessons that have been learned, um, but the more, I think the most important uh, has to do with uh, the process of consultation and participation. The whole idea of getting um, uh, all actors on board in order to uh, express their views, right, give their suggestions, um, tell what works and what doesn't work. I think this has been a very uh, important lesson which has to be exported to uh, other countries trying to uh, come out of adaptation strategies. Yeah, in Ghana, um, the, what the, the method we use, there are several ways of coming up with this, but uh, we decided to use um, uh, Ghana's existing agroecological zones by going to pick uh, a few communities within a zone. So that means that we are getting people who have uh, who depend on different livelihood systems, right, to express um, their views and their grievances specific to what impacts are affecting them. Because the agroecological zone in which you live is very important since we have. Uh, over 60 percent of people are uh, depending on nature then the next has to do with okay so how did you meet them who did you meet and here we use a two-pronged approach or probably even three-pronged we have uh, we have district assemblies that is the lowest level of decentralized governance and uh, they work with local people they are supposed to understand right the problems at local level and what efforts they are making yeah so then we had a few local communities Right, in which focus group discussions were held. And then you have NGOs, and the NGOs play two roles. They represent themselves and they represent local communities. So then, um, and we had NGOs all through the whole process, right? So at the local level consultations, NGOs were involved. And then at the higher level, we always had NGOs because then they are there to um, help challenge the sector guys the sectors, you know, uh, they tend to have all the technocrats, you know, who are uh, bench driven. So then it's good to have the NGOs around to tell them, okay, what about this? And then uh, you have a negotiated uh, more or less position that comes up. We have uh, the national, the NDPC, National Development Plan and Commission. Uh, I mean, that is part of this process, has been able to come out of guidelines, a booklet, telling all these assemblies, you have to mainstream climate change and showing them how to do it. Right, so this time we have moved away from just telling them, oh, this climate change and you have to talk about climate change and deal with it. We are now saying that if you want to mainstream climate change, this is how you do it. Right from line one to line, the last line, Z, A to Z. I mean, developed countries have a huge role to play. I mean, first of all, is I mean, admittance of responsibility, right? I mean, that alone is um, enough to give the psychological impetus for the rest of us to move forward. And two is um, being realistic, right? In uh, what kind of funding or what kind of assistance that they they give. And uh, I mean, here, I mean, I think the develop, I mean, the, the, I mean, developing countries are. Um, more than they were happy to hear that the um, there is a commitment of a hundred million instead of a, instead of one billion, right? Because then we plan, right? I mean, with hundred million, and we are more realistic with it rather than being told that this this you know one billion. I mean, only to have a program that is derailed by uh, lack of funds, you know. But then, um, if you don't have a program, it's better not to have a program than to start a program. That, I mean, that will not end and that would have, you know, I mean, destroyed the whole structure of an economy.